Okay, so after a few technical issues, I uh, ran into uh, a few issues. I actually um, ended up having to shut off my computer just a few minutes before it started, and of course it went into update mode. So happy Friday the 13th, everyone. This is Mark Leslie here, and I've got my friend Barnaby with me. And uh, today's uh, talk or feature is uh, about Friday the 13th. I'm going to talk a little bit about that. And uh, because it's a Friday evening and you should be relaxing, got a beer here, which is actually an appropriate beer for the evening. I have what is uh, it's from a Toronto brewery, Amsterdam Brew House, and it's a bone shaker. And it's an unfiltered India Pale Ale. It's a, it's a rather strong one, so I'll be sipping at that as the evening gets underway. Thanks for joining me here tonight on the free Friday Frights. Um, I want to initially uh, talk a little bit about the origin of Friday the 13th, because when we think about superstitions, we think about um, broken mirrors and, and walking under ladders and black cats and, and all those things. And when you look at Friday the 13th, it's actually considered a super superstition because it's kind of two different superstitions coming together at the same time. So the first superstition is the, the fear of, the, the number 13, uh, and I'm going to actually have to look at the word here because it's a little bit um, uh, a little bit uh, difficult to, to say the word. No, I, I have that later on uh, in, in my notes. What it is is um, one of the original sources and one of the most common references to the number 13 is that was the number of people at the Last Supper for Jesus. And the 13th guest was Judas. And depending on, on which perspective you take, he was either the 13th person to arrive because he was up to no good on you know, planning on, on the betrayal, or he was the first one to leave on his way to plan the betrayal. And it kind of came from that. And, and, and that sort of relates back to the fact that the Romans considered the number um, 13 to be unlucky because to them, 12 was a complete number. 12 represented completeness, and anything that went beyond 12 was unlucky. When you actually look, uh, you think about the Gregorian calendar uh, based on, on that, and you have 12 months, 13 would be unlucky. Um, the Zodiac uh, obviously has 12 signs as well. They don't uh, correspond exactly to the months, but they do over, overlap, uh, um, and they are 12. Um, so 13 was outside of that completeness and was considered uh, outcast, odd, unlucky, etc. And then you look at the fears associated with Friday, and there's quite a few of them. So, I mean, one of the ones is, uh, again, to go back to, uh, to, go back to uh, Christianity, and you look at the uh, number 13, uh, that's the day, or Friday, I should say, was the day that Jesus was um w was put to death um and so there's you know the 13 and the friday both come from that same source there's even some the the theologians who would suggest an even earlier reference from the same texts suggests that friday was the day that adam and eve ate the forbidden fruit and obviously anything that leads to the entire downfall of humankind from Paradise, the uh, paradise loss that happened, it was probably a bad or unlucky thing, and that was allegedly on a Friday. And then, of course, other um, uh, scholars have uh, suggested that Christians uh, adopted uh, Friday as an unlucky day because it coincided with um, the Islam uh, Sabbath um, as well. So uh, again, just sort of you know, our religion's better than yours kind of thing. Um, there are also nautical legends related to Friday. And they reference Friday as being the absolute worst day to begin a voyage. And uh, a new journey should never begin on a Friday. And there's an old, uh, sort of an old, an old wives poem that says, Now Friday came, you old wives say, of all the weeks, the unluckiest day. And there are stories uh, in, in, in nautical realms of a Captain Friday who allegedly broke multiple rules or multiple superstitions uh, about the building of his ship. 
he refused the traditional red ribbon uh, that would have been tied to the very first nail building the ship. And he also re refused to have the uh, lucky coin uh, that was usually laid beneath the mast of the ship. He refused that. And allegedly, when he set off sail on his HMS Friday ship, of course, because you know, all those legends, they all tie in nicely, uh, the ship disappeared and was never seen or heard from again. Um, and of course, they did launch on a Friday. The tale, of course, was actually revealed to be uh, an urban legend, but like things that aren't true, but people want to believe, it doesn't matter that it's not true. What matters is people like it, and it's a fun and neat story that fits in nicely and tidily with their already held beliefs. So even though the Captain Friday legend is not true, people still um, uh, believe in it and propagate it. But those are some of the other things related to Friday. So when you take the Friday and you take the 13 and you put them together, historically you, you want to take a, a look at what were some of those um, things that would have maybe led people to say, apart from putting them together, that Friday the 13th is a bad day or an unlucky day. Now, one of the earliest ones um, was apparently associated with the Knights of the Templar. This was a, a chivalrous order, um, and they were suppressed by King Philip IV uh, of France, uh, 1307. Now, he owed them a lot. He owed them money, and he owed them for a lot of the tasks that they did. And to get out of his debt, he created a series of false charges against the Knights Templar and uh, about corruption and honoring a false god and all kinds of just the things that would just be negative uh, towards the church. And he set out on the Friday the 13th and um, impounded their wealth, tortured them. Uh, the raids were initiated uh, on the Friday the 13th at dawn. And there were arrests and tortures, and they were tortured so much that they had false confessions. Uh, they were burned at the stake, all of those things. So that was one of the first uh, things. But when I was reading uh, Chambers' Dictionary, The Unexplained, looking uh, into the history, it says that there, there, there might have been evidence that the two unlucky elements of the 13th and Friday might not have actually been combined or considered uh, together before the end of the 19th century. Uh, now, they cite an 1898 edition of E. Cobham Brewer's Dictionary of Phrase and Fable as having unique and separate entries for both um, 13 is unlucky and Friday is unlucky, but they didn't have any entries considering the two of them in combination. Not that that was the be-all, end-all, but at least that was one of the reliable sources from the time. And in fact, that same article goes on to say that it may not have been until a book that was published in 1907. Now, this was a book by uh, Thomas W. Lawson, and it was called Friday, comma, the 13th. Now, Lawson's book was a, a romantic uh, love story about a rogue businessman who attempted to manipulate and crash the stock market on Friday the 13th. And that may have been in popular culture the first time that that day was used in that way. And because of the effect of this novel, it was a bestseller, sold 60,000 copies in uh, the first month or two. It was a bestseller, and that by as early as 1925, share traders had already developed from this popularity of this novel a strong aversion to uh, buying or trading or doing any business on Friday the 13th, which is kind of intriguing. Now. <clears throat> That was uh, some of the, the media associated, and it's kind of fascinating for me as a, as a big book nerd to think about the, um, the effect that a book, a novel, a piece of fiction can actually have on popular culture, which is kind of an interesting thing to look at as early as 1907. Um, other popular things about the day, of obviously, and there's lots of joke memes uh, going about, um, was in 1980. Um, the date, Friday the 13th, was used uh, in the title of what was supposed to initially be a standalone film. It was written by uh, Victor Miller and directed by Sean uh, Cunningham. And it was inspired by the 1978 success of John Carpenter's Halloween. So the character, uh, the well, the character in the book is really Jason in the first movie. Um, 
uh, and not to give away any spoilers if you haven't seen it, but Jason doesn't even really appear till the end of the movie. Um, it was going to be like this character like Michael Myers in the Halloween that was basically just going around and killing teenagers who were having sex, apparently, because having sex was bad. And, and this was this was this is what he did. He liked to uh, prevent them from having their fun. Um, but again, in Friday the 13th, uh, OK, some spoilers because the movie's been out for 30 years. So I'm sure someone you've heard about it anyways. It's actually um, Jason was a boy who died at the camp. Um, uh, Crystal Lake camp and when he was a child and he died while uh, the counselors who were supposed to be looking after him were you know drinking and having sex and cavorting and whatever and he drowned and so the the the, the bad guy in Friday the 13th is Jason's mother who uh, is there and is killing everyone because she you know obviously um, uh, it's related to the death of her son and then in the very very last scene of the movie uh, one of the last scenes in the movie, um, the the heroine who survived the attacks from her and, and kills her, is in the boat, uh, laying exhausted, and then this wretched, you know, um, shriveled and and sort of zombified body leaps out of the water and and goes on top of her, and and that's obviously that was Jason, and and so that's kind of the only time you actually see Jason Voorhees, uh, and because of the popularity of this film. It was so successful um, that uh, it prompted the series of sequels in which Jason showed up. And, and of course, uh, Jason, you know, only appears a little bit in, in the first movie, appears in the second movie. He doesn't actually don that hockey mask, which is such an iconic and recognizable image. One of the most recognizable and iconic images in horror movie history is that mask. I mean, you just have to put on a goalie hockey mask and everyone knows that you're Jason. Uh, just like if you put on that old William Shatner mask, you're Michael Myers from Halloween. Um, I mean, it's as iconic as the, the Darth Vader um, uh, mask, for example. But he did not put that on until after he killed someone, a hockey player, in the third movie, and then he put it on, and then that became the thing. Uh, 30 years of Jason. Voorhees and all kinds of memes every year like he's sad looking at the calendar and it's Friday the 12th and he's like shucks can't do anything um now I want to talk a little bit about um uh, Friday the 13th not being unlucky for some so for example um in Greece as well as in uh the Spanish-speaking world um Tuesday the 13th is actually considered a day to bring bad luck and in Italy, Friday the 17th is considered an unlucky day. So it's not Friday the 13th. And I'm wearing a shirt right now, which uh, was something that was created from Port Dover in Ontario, uh, which is just, you know, a few hours uh, away from here. And there's this beautiful town on Lake Erie in Port Dover. And as many as 100,000 people flock to Port Dover on Friday the 13th. And it's all part of something that started, uh, you know, just a year after the, the Friday the 13th movie came out. Back in 1981, there was a group of about 25 friends who had gathered at a small hotel in this town, and they had such an amazing time. It was like a sort of a pilgrimage drive, and they took their motorbikes, and they all went and hung out. And they had such a good time there that uh, weekend that they thought, we're going to return every Friday the 13th, because there's at least one in every calendar year. Um, and we're going to return. And then as more motorcycle enthusiasts had heard about it, they thought, what a great reason for a semi-regular destination getaway. We can all embark on a pilgrimage to the town of Port Dover. And earlier today, as I was uh, driving into uh, Hamilton around noon, just on the highway outside of Hamilton, because you have to kind of go through Hamilton uh, to get to the highway to Port Dover. Sure enough, I saw you usually you hear and see the motorbikes just going all day and all day. Um, I have never actually been to Port Dover on uh, Friday the 13th, but I usually go right after. Uh, it's just so crazy. It's so busy. Haven't, haven't, um, it, the timing hasn't worked out, but I usually go a week or two after and pick up some really awesome swag because, you know, Barnaby and I got to have the skulls and the stuff like that. And, and usually there's a, a lot of skulls. I think this one was from uh, a 2009 where there were actually uh, three, uh, I think there were three uh, Friday the 13th that year. 
which is why they had the, the the three skulls. Now, I thought it might also be interesting to um, uh, share a few facts uh, about Friday the Thirteenth. Some interesting. 13 interesting facts uh, about Friday the 13th, and I'm going to probably read these so I can get them right in it. And of course, I use large print. And uh, I'll just take a, a quick sip here. If you're uh, having a, a beverage yourself, you may want to en enjoy that as well. So number one, the fear of the number 13 is so common that you'll regularly uh, notice that many hotels and many apartment buildings don't have a 13th floor. This is because it wasn't uncommon for guests to request to not stay on that floor. So um, in terms of apartments, in terms of hotels, uh, floors will go from the 12th to the 14th. I mean, none of us are stupid enough to, you know, to uh, be fooled and think, oh, no, I'm on the 14th floor. I'm really on the 13th floor. But there's something in it. It's kind of like that price point of, you know, uh, $9.99 is not $10. We all know it's $10, but it's one penny less. So it tricks us uh, to thinking that it's cheaper, uh, even though there's that one penny, just like the 14th floor tricks us into comfort that it's not the 13th floor, at least. Um, number two, similarly to this, next time you're at an airport, pay attention to see, does it go from gate 12 to gate 14? Because some airports follow the same thing because of people's fear of, uh, in, 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 in the Western world, at least, the fear of 13 and check to see the next time you're flying if there is no gate 13. Uh, number three, uh, and, and this I'm going to have to read these because it's going to be uh, difficult. The official phobia names associated with the date Friday the 13th uh, or Friday or the number 13th. So, so Parascadecatriophobia and Fregatriciscophobia. Well, okay, you know, these phobias are the two names uh, that are used for fear of Friday the 13th. Paraskevi uh, is a Greek for Friday, and Frigg is the Norse god after whom Friday was named. Now, trick, trichodecophobia, triskodecophobia, triskodecophobia, is a fear or avoidance of the number 13. Uh, number four, American President uh, Franklin D. Roosevelt is said to have regularly avoided travel on the 13th day of the month, of any month, not just on, on a, a Friday the 13th, but he allegedly would never host 13 guests at a meal. And President uh, Herbert Hoover was also averse to the number 13. And not to get political, but I'm pretty sure there's a president sitting in the White House right now who We'd be lucky if he could actually count to 13 because he doesn't have that many fingers. Sorry, couldn't resist the jab. Um, number five, Alfred Hitchcock, uh, the director of so many classic thriller and horror films, was born on the 13th. And interestingly, there was a film entitled number 13, which, uh, which was supposed to be Hitchcock's directorial debut, and it never made it past the first few scenes and was shut down due to unlucky financial problems. Number six, one of the most controversial political leaders of his era and regularly seen as an enemy to the United States, Fidel Castro, was born on Friday the 13th in August of 1926. Uh, number seven, fear of Friday the 13th is seen by some business people as serious business and perhaps lucky for some. According to the Stress Management Center and Phobia Institute in Asheville, uh, North Carolina, which offers therapy to help people overcome their fear of Friday the 13th, hundreds of millions of dollars of business are lost due to people's fear of flying or doing anything or business as usual whenever Friday the 13th comes around. We're going to come back to that in another point, which I think is kind of interesting. But for now, number eight, in 2012, there were uh, three Friday the 13th. Um, I guess I was wrong about that with the T-shirt. The um, it was January 13th, April 13th, and July 13th. All three of those dates, um, uh, they fell exactly 13 weeks apart from one another, which is kind of intriguing. And the previous time that that had happened had been in 1984, 
speaking of novels, uh, considering the, you know, the year that George Orwell wrote about, uh, that was kind of a dystopian sort of, lots of people had their share of bad luck in that novel. Uh, number nine, there will be two Friday the 13th this year, today, April, uh, Friday, April 13th, and Friday, July 13th. So if you don't get all the fun and excitement in today, you have one more stab at it before the end of 2018. Number 10, Taylor Swift, pop music sensation, was born on the 13th. She turned 13 years old on Friday the 13th. She's regularly played with the number 13 throughout her career. The song, The Lucky One, is the 13th track on her Red album. Uh, it contains a 13 second introduction and the word, the work lucky, the word lucky, I should say, is said 13 times in that song. She obviously considers 13 her lucky number. Her Twitter account, if you look at it, is at Taylor Swift 13. She used to regularly draw the number 13 on her hand with eyeliner before each show. And she has claimed that when she's seated in row 13 or, or row M, which is the 13th letter, at an award show, she always wins. That was number 10. <laughs> number 11, the classic horror film Friday the 13th takes place on, uh, which we talked about, on June 13th, 1958. And then June 13, 1980, the latter date being uh, a Friday, and that's when Jason's mom comes back to avenge the death of her son, as, as I believe um, Crystal Lake Camp reopens. And that's why uh, she came back to, uh, to, to avenge his death. Now, this film, uh, which became part of a huge franchise, made, uh, wow, almost uh, 40 million, uh, 40, 39, comma, 754, comma, 601. Yeah, $39 million, $40 million on a budget of just over half a million, $550,000. That's a lot. No wonder they did a whole bunch of movies. Um, number, um, number 12, which is associated with that. Now, the movie was mostly filmed at Camp Nobi Bosco in Blairstown, New Jersey. It was a Boy Scout camp that originated in 1927 and is still in operation today. And because, you know, uh, fans continue to flock there, because that's where Friday the 13th was filmed, uh, they offer Crystal Lake tours. And, and Crystal Lake obviously being a fictional setting for Camp Nobi Bosco. And number 13, the lucky number 13. Statistically speaking, Friday the 13th is actually safer than most days. Now, whether because this is people are staying at home, less people on the roads, less people out there, they're fearfully tucked in bed and not doing much. They're not taking any chances. They're a lot more careful. The Dutch Center for Insurance Statistics conducted a study in 2008 that showed that there were fewer traffic accidents, fewer fires, and fewer robberies on Friday the 13th compared to other Fridays in the same year. And so maybe, just maybe, Friday the 13th could actually be not all that unlucky. What do you think, Barnaby? Doesn't have much to say. Well, that was some of the trivia that I wanted to share uh, about Friday the 13th. Just checking to see if there are any questions. And I don't see any uh, questions. But thank you so much for checking this out. I had a lot of fun. This was interesting. The uh, article that I put together uh, was specifically written for this free Friday fright, and it was fun to write uh, something new. Um, while it's at the website, marklesley.ca slash free Friday frights, um, I thought it was an interesting enough article that I shared the post on uh, on my blog as well at marklesley.blogspot.com because I thought it might be something that would be interesting and intriguing for people. Also had some fun creating some visual memes, obviously using Jason, uh, Jason Voorhees from Friday the 13th, because, you know, you've you got to do that. And, and I find it fun when, when um, pop culture and novels and, you know, uh, re religious history and all of these elements can come together. Uh, and it's always fun uh, because on Friday the 13th, there's usually lots of fun 
uh, chatter about it on the radio and through social media and stuff like that. Next week, next Friday, I will be doing fiction again. I haven't um, figured out what I'm going to put up there, uh, but I will be doing a reading of a short story, and I, that will be posted on uh, marklesley.ca, and I'll talk about the backstory as well. I'll do a reading of the story, and then I'll talk a little bit about that, and of course, answer questions. Thanks so much for joining me and checking out this free Friday Frights. I hope you have an absolutely wonderful Friday the 13th, and perhaps an even better Saturday the 14th. I know in this part of the world, Friday the 13th is bringing, well, not just this part of the world, but many uh, areas around here is bringing a terrible ice storm. So uh, we'll probably be staying safe and tucked at home with some great beer, some fun books to read, and um, maybe, maybe just then, it'll be a warm and cozy Saturday and not a frightfully chilly one like we're expecting to get. And maybe, just maybe, spring will soon arrive. Have a wonderful evening. Take care. Talk to you later.